Our group recently published the findings of a trial of serendipity. I call this a trial of serendipity because we were able to identify the activity of cabozentinib in patients in a, in a patient with intracranial meningiomas. Cabo is an oral multi-targeted kinase inhibitor with specific activity against MET and VEGFR2. We had enrolled a patient with metastatic thyroid cancer to receive cabozentinib. This patient also had an intracranial metastatic lesion from their thyroid cancer, which was resected, and therefore the patient was being followed with MR imaging. MR imaging identified two intraventricular meningiomas that had re remained stable for a period of time and then had slowly started progressing. Therefore, we had the ability to get time point measurements on these two lesions. The patient was treated with cabozentinib for their metastatic progressive thyroid cancer but we were able to obtain information on the effect of this drug on the two intraventricular meningiomas as an ancillary measurement because brain MRI scans were being obtained to look at the status of the resected thyroid cancer metastatic lesion in the brain. What we identified was that both lesions, both intracranial when uh, intra intraventricular meningiomas demonstrated an early response to this drug decreasing in size within one month of therapy. And by four months of therapy, there was a greater than 50% average volumetric reduction, 40% in the case of one lesion, 60% in the case of the other lesion, which has remained sustained. We had not previously noticed any described activity of this agent, cabozentinib, against intraventricular or other meningiomas, and therefore felt it appropriate to understand why this could be the case. We know that there are multiple reports in the literature that suggest that the VEGF pathway in particular, as well as other pathways, are upregulated in meningiomas and contribute to the proliferation of meningiomas. Other VEGF inhibitors, such as bevacizumab, have demonstrated limited activity in patients with recurrent meningioma. It is therefore unlikely that cabozentinib's action against VEGFR2 is the full explanation for the response observed in this patient. It is most likely that a combinatorial effect, potentially involving both MET inhibition and VEGFR2 inhibition, are responsible for the observed response in this particular patient. In that context, there are preclinical data in the literature suggesting that dual inhibition of MET and VEGFR2 is far more effective at inhibiting proliferation in a number of preclinical tumor models. While this is just one case report, it provides preliminary evidence for the possibility of testing a multi-kinase inhibitor such as cabozentinib in the context of a recurrent meningioma. Several targeted agents have in fact been tested in recurrent meningioma to date. Most of these have demonstrated very limited to no activity. Perhaps the hint that we get from the use of cabozentinib in this particular patient's response is the need and the potential to combine either multi-kinase inhibitors or multiple inhibitors targeting several different pathways as a potential testable future clinical strategy.